Hi guys, it's Lara. Thank you so much for watching and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will show you how I made my new Bali leotard and skirt. Now, last year at this time I had a pixie, so there was no way I would wear a leotard and a skirt, anything that would look too feminine, because I just didn't like the way it looked. So I've been wearing usually my yoga outfits, for which I also have tutorials on this channel, so I will link them down below, because I found it went a little bit better with the short hair. But this year my hair is finally long enough so that I can put it in a bun. So I've decided to make myself something a little bit more girly. Now I, oh, sorry, <laughs> I just dropped my leotard. I made myself this pink and black leotard and also a skirt that looks like a wrap skirt. I mean, it is wrapped, but you don't have to tie it. Because I don't like the way they are usually sold. They usually have a ribbon and you are supposed to wrap it around your waist, but when I train, sometimes you bend back and forward and the ribbon never stays in place and I just don't like the way it feels, so I made a little bit different solution. Now, the leotard is basically the same pattern that I created for this bodysuit. I will link the tutorial down below if you missed that. So it is a little bit repetitive, but as you can see, I've sold it a little bit differently because the top is made of a different color and also there are this time no buttons on the bottom. So if you wanna know how I made my new ballet outfit and um, how I adjusted the pattern and how I created the skirt and the skirt pattern, then please keep watching. Now let's have a look at the pattern for the leotard. So this is the sketch that I have shown you when I made the bodysuit with the snaps on the bottom. I have explained in that video that you will need to add a little rectangle on the bottom for the closure, but we will leave this out. So the idea how I made the pattern when I paired a pattern for a shirt and for panties is basically the same. Now let's say these are my boobs here. So I measured about one inch below my boobs and this is where I cut the pattern. And then I ended up having this part and this part and I only had to add here on each side about half an inch seam allowance. So that was it. I didn't have to do anything else with that pattern. Now let's have a look at the pattern for the skirt. So I measured the circumference of my waist and I multiplied it time 1.5 because I wanted the front parts to overlap like this. What I also wanted to have was a skirt that was longer in the back than in the front. I always find it more beautiful than if it would be like either the same length or even shorter. So I had to create a curve, the best way to do it is to take a curved guide or simply just do it freehand. Now let's say this is the folded fabric. I would make half of the curve, which would be my waist time 1.5 and the number then divided by two, that's this curve. Then I decided how long the skirt was supposed to be in the back. So that was obviously the length in the middle, which is this one. And then I made a slow curve that was coming to this pointy end. I made sure that somewhere here was the length I want to have here in the front. It doesn't have to be exact, but you know, you should know kind of somewhat where is your crotch if you want to cover it. And then I came up with this shape and when I cut it out of the folded fabric, I got this shape and that was the pattern for my skirt. Here we have all the pieces for my leotard. Now let's start here on the left side. So these two pieces are my front parts and on the other side, these are my back parts. This little piece is the lining for the panty part. There I have a strip of fabric that I'm gonna use as the edging for my neckline. And here I have the sleeves. And here I have the mesh piece for my skirt. On the top there is a strip of the same jersey that I'm using for the bottom of my leotard and there is also an elastic band. I started working on the leotard first. I pinned the pink top parts to the bottom parts. I 
I also pinned the bottom parts and the panties lining together. I've sewn all through with stretchy overlock stitch. On the top I folded the seam downwards and I have sewn through with stretchy zigzag and this is what it looked like. Here is what the bottom looked like. I pinned the lining in place for the time being. Next I pinned one shoulder together. And I have sewn it through with stretchy overlock stitch and as usual at the end I cut back any excess fabric. I folded the long strip of fabric for my edging in the middle and I pinned it together. You don't have to do that, you could simply iron the strip of fabric, then you would have a clear mark where the middle is and that way you wouldn't have to pin it together. I personally prefer it that way. And then I started pinning the edging to the neckline. Here is what it looked like once that was done. I have sewn the edging on with stretchy overlock stitch. And then I folded the seam downwards. I switched the black thread that I had in my sewing machine for a pale pink thread and I have sewn around the neckline with regular straight stitch. And then the neckline looked like this. As a next step, I pinned the other shoulder together. As usual, I have sewn it through with stretchy overlock stitch. And once that was done, I folded the seam to one side and I have sewn through the end with regular straight stitch. And then I pinned the sides of the leotard together and three guesses what, I have sewn them through with stretchy overlock stitch. Once that was finished, I cut back the excess fabric. Next, I pinned the sides of the sleeves together and I've sewn them through again with the stretchy overlock stitch. At the end, I folded the edge inwards and I've sewn through with stretchy zigzag. And then I pinned the sleeves to the leotard. I have sewn them on with, again, the stretchy overlock stitch that I like using for stretchy fabrics. And once that was done, the top of the leotard was finished and it looked like this. And then I had to finish the bottom, so I started folding the edge inwards and I also placed an elastic band inside. And then I have sewn through with stretchy zigzag. And then my load heart was done. For the skirt, I first pinned the elastic band together and I've sewn it through with zigzag. 
Next, I pinned the side of the waistband together and I have sewn it through with stretchy overlock stitch and I also cut back any excess fabric. Once that was done, I have sewn around the edge of the skirt with a very dense zigzag and I was stretching the fabric out while I was sewing so it would create this ruffled edge. A video in which I have shown all there is to know about zigzag is linked down below. I have shown this technique there too. And then I folded the front parts of the skirt towards the mark that I made and I pinned them in place. Here is what it looked like. And then I started pinning the waistband to the skirts wrong sides facing up, which means right sides facing each other. Here is what it looked like when the waistband has been pinned in place. Unfortunately, I noticed only after it has been sewn on that I switched the sides and I ended up having the seam on the waistband in the front, but it's okay. I have sewn the waistband to the skirt with stretchy overlock stitch and once that was done I folded the seam upwards, I placed the elastic band inside, then I folded the remaining part of the waistband over it and I pinned it in place. Here is what it looked like, here you can notice that I have the seam on my waistband in the front so please learn from my mistake and make sure that the seam will be in the back. I have sewn through with stretchy zigzag and then my skirt was done. So this is how I made my new ballet outfit. I can't wait for my ballet classes to start, but I will have to be a little bit more patient because they will start in October. But fortunately I have a ballet bar at home so I can practice at home. I am not a professional. I am far, far, far from it because I have started doing ballet as an adult and my form is probably horrible to anyone who actually understands something about ballet. But the thing is you don't have to be perfect in order to enjoy something. And dancing is so important to me. I enjoy dancing so much. I have this huge passion for it and I enjoy every second of it. So that's it for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions, just write them down below in the comments. As usual, I have listed and linked down below a lot of stuff, a few videos and playlists that might be useful for you and all of my Instagram accounts. I do have a few affiliate links in case you're interested down below. And as usual, I have written also the music that I have used in today's video down below. So thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so much and I'm looking forward to seeing you with my next video. Bye.